Hey team, we're going to learn how we can easily authenticate Spotify API requests using Netlify API authentication. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Spotify probably needs no introduction, but it's a media service that allows you to listen to, as it says, millions of songs and podcasts. The cool thing is on top of that, they provide a web API where we have a, access to a lot of different endpoints, whether we want to just kind of search Spotify's catalog or if we want to try to look up some of the information about our account. In particular, we're going to look at the get users top items endpoint where we can get things like the top artists or tracks over a period of time, where if you're familiar with Spotify, they have this uh, rap series where it provides you a look at your top artists and other parts of the Spotify experience over that past year. Where if we kind of look at the screenshots, since it's only really an application that you can get on your phone, we can see here where you can get all your top artists and it provides more details on top of that. The issue though is authorization is tricky where we have to register an application. And we also have to actually recreate the OAuth flow unless, unless we're using a little tool to get that token for us, where we have to actually implement these things in order to make a simple API request. So instead, we're going to use this new tool from Netlify called API Authentication, where because of its acquisition of OneGraph, which is a GraphQL service that kind of glues all those services together, we're able to actually create an active session right inside of our Netlify account, our site account, where we can connect to services like Stripe and Spotify, which is what we're going to use today, in order to easily make requests to that API. Now, if you're not familiar with Netlify, it's more than just a hosting platform, it's an automation platform where we can build and deploy our applications applications super easily and we can do other things like create serverless functions and like we're seeing here API authentication. So to see how this works we're going to spin up a new Next.js application using this starter I created where it's really just going to provide a grid of images that we can use in order to add our top artists and our top tracks into an app just to focus on actually making requests to the API. Now, if you're going to follow along, you can head over to this GitHub where my demo top music starter is available. You can find the link into the, in the description, but we're going to head down to the bottom here where we're going to grab this yarn or npx command and I'm going to paste it right into my terminal and also append a my Spotify rewrapped at the end for my directory where what it's going to do is Next.js is going to fetch this clone and clone this template that I created. It's going to create a local project with that. It's going to install all the dependencies and it's also going to reset Git so we have a starting point for our new application. But once it's done, we can now CD into that directory and I can run yarn dev, which is going to spin up a local server. And if I open this localhost 3000 in my browser, we can see that once it loads, I have that same exact site as I just showed from Netlify with my starter. So our goal here is going to be to take this application and replace all these images with our own top artists and tracks. To do that, we're going to first deploy this out to Netlify as a new site. We're going to enable that API authentication and then use that authentication to actually make the request to Spotify. So in order to actually deploy this out to Netlify, I'm going to use GitHub as my hosting provider for the code. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new repository where I'm going to call it that same thing that I did locally, my Spotify rewrapped. And I'm not going to select any of these options here because we want to create an empty repository. Where then, as soon as we have our repository, we want to go through these steps and add our local project. Now, because when we actually use the create next app to create this project, it already reset Git for us. So we can kind of skip down to this Git remote add where we already have our main branch and I can add that remote origin and then I can push that project up to the main branch so that once that's there I can refresh the page and we can now see that we have all that code up on our git repository. Now once I'm over on Netlify I want to log in so I can actually create a new site. So right inside of the main Netlify dashboard we're going to want to go to this add new site button where we're going to import an existing project. Now, if you are using a different Git provider or if you're not authenticated, at this point, you wanna select the Git provider of choice. I'm using GitHub. And if you aren't authenticated, it's going to ask you to log in so that you can actually find your repository. We're here, I'm gonna now search for my repository, my Spotify rewrapped, which I already had in that list. And what it's going to do is then search through GitHub for all my repositories where I can then find that option. And I'm going to now set that up as a new uh, Netlify site, where if I scroll down, we can actually see that Next Netlify already recognized that it's a Next.js site. So it's going to install the build plugin for us so that we can actually deploy it to Netlify. And it's also going to specify the settings that we need in order to build that. So we can just, again, go right down to the bottom and click deploy site, and we're going to be off. And Netlify is going to take that, build it, and deploy it out to the web. 
Now, as that's taking its time to deploy, we want to get started actually enabling the ability to use API authentication on Netlify. We can find this by going up to the icon in the top right where we're going to want to select Netlify Labs. This feature is still technically in beta, so we need to actually enable it on our account as an experimental feature so that we can actually start taking advantage of it. So once we're on this labs page, we want to scroll down and we're going to find that Netlify API authentication. And we can see that I already actually have it enabled on my account, but we want to click that enable button so that we then have it available to add to our site. Now, once it is enabled, we're going to head back over to our main site. We're going to find that site that was deployed. And by now, it probably should be deployed where I can open that up. And again, we're not going to see anything different at this point because we just deployed that same starter that we saw locally. But now what we can do is head over to our site settings, where if we scroll down and on the left hand side of the page, we can now see this API authentication section, where if we go ahead and click that, we can see that we can now enable API authentication for our site name. So I'm going to go ahead and click that enable button and again, click enable to actually confirm where it actually went through. And we can now see so we have a bunch of options for different services that we can connect with. Now you can use any of these services similar to how we're going to use it today, but we want to use Spotify. So I'm going to go ahead and click connect next to Spotify. And if you're not logged into Spotify yet, it's going to actually ask you to log in, which we can see that it's doing here. But once you actually log into your account, you should now see that it shows disconnect instead of connect next to that service. But we have one more thing that we want to do on that Spotify account before we actually move forward, which is scrolling down and looking through all these scopes, where particularly we want to look for this listed listening history section where we want to check bo the box next to the read your top artists and content so that we can actually grab that top artist and tracks. And then we're going to hit update Spotify scopes where it's going to re-authenticate with your Spotify account to update those settings. And now we're good to go with actually connecting Spotify to our account. So now that we actually have our Netlify site set up and ready to go, we want to actually try to start developing this locally so we can try to play around with the code and see how this is going to work. Now, this is a somewhat optional step, but in order to actually see how this is working locally for us, we need to be able to preview the environment. Now, typically, if you're running a command like yarn dev or npm run dev, it's not going to get that Netlify environment, which we need in order to authenticate with Spotify. So what we're going to do is instead use the Netlify CLI, which is going to inject that environment into us programmatically so that we can have access to that session and make the request locally when we're developing. So to do that, we're going to take this command of npm install Netlify CLI, which is going to pass in the global flag so that we can run this command anywhere. And we're going to paste that right into our terminal so it actually goes through and installs the package. And once that's finished, we're going to run Netlify login, where it's going to actually open up our Netlify account inside of our browser or using this link inside of the terminal, where we're going to actually authorize this session inside of our terminal so that we can work with Netlify from our terminal. So I'm going to go ahead and click authorize, which then I can return back to my terminal where I can see that it says that I am now logged into my account where I can then run Netlify help just like it says, and I can see all the commands that are available to me because I just installed that. Now, before I actually start getting started locally with this project, I have one more thing that I want to do, and that's link my local project to my deployed Netlify project. So to do that, I'm going to run Netlify link which what it's going to do is it's going to give me a few options for how to do this. Now, I deployed my project to Netlify from my GitHub repository, which I actually am using locally. So I can use that same remote origin and select it for Netlify to find my deployed site where I can actually link it locally. Now, in my case, I have two projects that actually match that on Netlify due to earlier demos for me testing this out. But we can see the Netlify site ID of Angry Goldberg here, which is the one that I'm currently working with. So I want to select that same site ID inside of my terminal, where then we can see that it's already linked up and we're actually ready to go to get started developing locally. So to do that, I'm going to run Netlify dev instead of my typical yarn dev or npm run dev, which is going to grab my current Netlify environment for this site. And it's going to run it inside of an application so that I can actually develop this thing locally using my Netlify information. Now, if we look back at the terminal that kind of disappeared when it was opening this up inside of a new tab, 
we can see that it's grabbing that injecting my build settings from my Netlify environment, particularly this one graph uh, off the fly token, off the fly token, uh, which includes that Spotify session token that we'll see in a second here, so that we now have access to that authentication data. So if we actually start to dig in the code, I'm going to go to my source directory. If you're following along my pages, I'm going to open up the homepage at index.js where nothing really special is happening here right now. I have these unordered lists with all of my items in here, which currently are a bunch of Blink-192 references, but I wanna dynamically grab that data from Spotify so I can inject it into this page as props. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll to the very bottom of the page. I'm going to export a new async function called get static props, which then inside I'm going to finally return a new object with a props property and object, which will eventually have that data for me. Now, in order to easily grab that data from our Netlify environment, we're going to use a package from NPM called at Netlify slash functions, which is just going to include some helper functions that we're going to use in order to grab that environment. So I'm going to run this command where instead of NPM, I'm going to still run yarn, but I'm going to run yarn add at Netlify slash functions. And once it's done, I'm going to spin back up Netlify dev, which will open up my development server. But now if I scroll back up to the top of my index.js page, I'm going to import a new get secrets function from my at Netlify slash functions. And if I go back down to my get static props function, I'm going to create a new constant called secrets, which I'm going to use await get secrets. And let's console log out that data right away just so we can see what's inside. If I go back to my page and I actually reload it, I can then open up my terminal where I can now see my secrets and I see this Spotify property, which it includes all of my information for my current active session with Spotify, where in particular, we can see we're logged in, but we have this bearer token, which is exactly what we need in order to make authenticated requests over to Spotify. So in particular, we want to use the get users top items endpoint. So I'm going to actually grab this URL straight from this get request, except for that type, because we need to replace that type. And I'm going to head back over to my code. We're at the bottom inside of get static props. I'm going to create a new constant called artists response because we're eventually going to create a tracks response as well. And let's set that equal to await and use the fetch. Uh, API where we're going to pass right in that API URL and we're going to tag along artists right at the end there. Now, once we have that response, we want to grab the data from that. So I'm going to say constant data is equal to await our artist response dot JSON. And then let's console log that out again to see what we have. So we're going to console log out the data where if we now open up our browser and refresh the page, we can open up our terminal and we can actually see that we're getting a 401, but that's expected because we still haven't passed in that token. So as a second argument to our fetch API, we're going to pass in an, a new object where we're going to specify our headers and we're going to pass in an authorization header where we want to make sure we have a capital A for that authorization header where the value is going to be a bearer token where we're going to write in plain text, but then we're going to say that we want to get dynamically our secrets.spotify.bearer token. But now if I refresh that page like before and open up our terminal, we can now see that I'm getting all this artist data, including bands like Hit the Lights, if you're familiar with them, where we can see all these artists that I have listened to over the course of the last six months, which is the default time frame for its API. Now, if we look in this response, we have a total of 33 items, which is probably too much for what we want to do. So we want to actually limit it similar to this limit of 20 here, but we're going to limit it to 10 and we're just going to show 10 at a time for our page. So if we look at the options here, we can see that in addition to just simply changing the type, we can do things like add the limit here where we can pass in that value, which we can use 10. So at the end of the URL, I'm going to add a question mark for the query parameters and I'm going to say limit of 10. And this time when the page refreshes, we can see that limit of 10 where we're only going to have those 10 items to loop through and pass in as props to our page. So speaking of, let's grab that data so we can pass it through. And we can see that all of these artists are collected in this items property, the array value for that items. So let's first destructure that items from our response. And I'm going to rename that to artists just so that it's easier to pass through as a prop. And I'm going to actually pass that right into that props object and then get rid of this console log. But if we then scroll all the way up to the top of the page, we're going to update this home function so that we can make available that new artist prop. So let's again console log that out, but we're going to do so in the browser this time to see if it's working. 
But now once we refresh the page, we can see the artist data right inside of our web console. And if we start to poke through here, we can actually see what that artist information looks like, such as Rockabye Baby, which is the lullaby version of Blink-182 songs that I listen to quite often now with the new sun. But we can actually take this data now as props and loop through it to create our UI. So to do that, I'm going to recreate each and every one of these list items, but I'm going to do so dynamically. So first, let's get rid of all these list items inside of the top artist, except for the one, because what we're going to do is we're going to say that for all of our artists, we're going to map through and for each artist, we're going to return a new set of data where we're going to paste in this list item dynamically so that we can start replacing all this data with the dynamic props. For the first thing, because we're in React, we need to specify a key. So I'm going to say artist.id, but then we can do things like instead of Blink-182, we can say artist.name. Now, once we're in the browser, we can see that it's already updating the titles, but let's update the images and also the URLs that we're going to use. And to do that for the URLs, we can use this external URLs key, which is just going to be a Spotify link. But for the images, we have this images array where we're just going to grab the first image. We're going to use that URL that it provides us along with the width and height so that we set the height and width automatically for each and every one of our images. So for the URL, I'm going to replace that with artist.external URL spotify and for my image let's say that we want to make this artist.images and get the zero which is going to be the very first image inside that array we're going to grab the width and i'm going to also copy and paste the same value into both the source here and i'm going to also create my height which i didn't have before so that we can actually start changing those properties and get those values right inside. Now we also want to always make sure that we have an alt. We have it already showing as artist photo, so we can probably leave that since we have the name of the artist right below. And it looks like I made a quick mistake here. It's actually external URLs with an S. But once we fix that, we can head back over to our browser and we can see that we now have our images and it's looking pretty great at this point. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, except for we're going to grab our top tracks. So I'm going to actually just simply clone all of this stuff that I had for the artist. And I'm going to replace each instant of artists, which I can probably just grab the artist singular here, where I can say that for each one of those, I want to actually grab the tracks. And we can make sure that it's actually the correct key here so that we're making the correct uh, request to the API. But then we can pass these tracks right through as a prop, just like we did with the artists. And before we actually add that, let's console log that out to make sure it's working. We can see just like what we expected, we have all of our tracks where we have the similar keys where we have our name, we have the external URLs, and we don't have an images array, but what we can do is we can grab the image from the album key, where there it's going to have a similar images array just like we expected from the artist. So just like the request code, I'm going to actually copy and paste this dynamic artist map that we created, and I'm going to replace all these list elements with that same kind of snippet. But this time, similar to what we just did, I'm going to replace all of those instances of artist with my track. And then we also probably want to make sure that that alt still has track album photo. But the only thing that we actually need to change on top of that, if you remember, is we didn't have that top level images. But what we had was the album image. So we're going to specify that we're going to have track.album.image album if I spell it right dot images get that first value and then the actual image width height and source but once that reloads we can then again scroll down to the top track section where we can now see all those top tracks that I had over time where as you can tell I've been listening to those lullabies quite a bit so that's why they're pretty far up at the top of my list but by being able to use that Netlify API authentication, we were easily able to take advantage of that Spotify web API without having to create any custom or complicated logic to actually authorize those requests manually. Netlify's API authentication provides a powerful mechanism for being able to create authenticated requests to other powerful services so that we can create even more dynamic, powerful web apps. What's your favorite service that you saw on the list? Was there any that are missing? Let me know in the comments. If you want to take this a step further, we can optimize all that imagery that we had on our rewrap page, where we can use tools like the Cloudinary Build plugin for Netlify, which will automatically add all of those to Cloudinary sources to make it really easy to optimize those for the web. Or if you want to learn how to do more cool things with Netlify services, here I show you how you can actually use Puppeteer inside of Netlify functions in my Automate Chrome and an API with Puppeteer and Netlify serverless functions. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up, subscribe, and click that little notification bell for future web dev content. Thanks for watching.